For those of you who don't know, the E39 BMW comes with two different fans. They have a mechanical fan attached to the front of the engine, and they have an electric fan on the front side of the radiator that's there for when the AC is on and if the car starts to get a little bit too hot. It's a common problem to have them fail, and unfortunately, there's two different kinds of them, and they're very expensive. So in this video today, I'm going to show you my alternative to that. It's not going to be for everyone. It's not a perfect replacement. It's not as easy as some of the other things but it will be a dramatic improvement for me personally and it may apply to some of you as well. I have the bumper removed and I have the shroud removed that comes off in front of it. You're going to have to loosen the headlights up to get that shroud off. There's four eight millimeter screws that hold that on plus three pop clips across the top. There's also four 13 millimeter nuts that hold this fan on. So you're gonna have to remove all that. That's where I am at now. There's two different types of fans. There's pre-facelift and post-facelift. Post-facelift, you're gonna have three wires. Pre-facelift, you're gonna have four wires. That's how you can tell which type of fan you have. The older ones, a little bit more simple, a little bit easier to do an aftermarket fan on. The newer ones, the fan speed is variable. So instead of just a high speed and a low speed, You've got a variable fan speed depending on what the computer calls for. It's a little bit harder to override. I thought I could maybe just set it up so that the fan would come on whenever the AC was on. I just wanted a switch basically that went off the AC signal. I realized my car, the AC is always on. So no matter what, whether it's hot outside or cold outside, I always have the AC button hit just so that the air doesn't get musky or anything like that. Plus I live in South Carolina, so it's very rare, but it's even cold here anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this fan with a slightly smaller 12 inch fan, and it's going to be running all the time. So as long as the engine is on, the car is in the on position with the engine running, that little fan will be on. The fan behind it, the electric fan conversion I did, that only runs when the car reaches 200 degrees Fahrenheit in concordance with the lower 190 degree Fahrenheit thermostat the car has. So that fan will be the primary cooling fan so if the car is sitting and starts to get hot. The other fan is mostly just there to make sure that I have air across the AC condenser when I have the AC on and just to supplement the larger 14 inch electric fan that's on the other side of the radiator, prevent it from having to come on as often and help keep the car cool in traffic. The way I'm gonna wire that is going to be exactly like the electric fan conversion that I did in a previous video. The only difference is we will not need that thermo switch. So I'm gonna use the same wires for everything and it's just going to run through a relay like before. I'm gonna have an inline fuse. It's gonna have the switch 12 volt wire. Everything's gonna be exactly the same. I just won't need this thermo switch. Now, even if you guys are doing this the proper way and you're just gonna replace this fan with another fan, it's probably gonna cost you about 150 to $200. Mine's gonna cost you less than 30. But one thing that you're going to find is when you take this fan off, there is gonna be a bunch of crap stuck behind this fan. So as you can see, we have all sorts of leaves and crap and dead bugs that have gotten stuck there over the years, blocking up our AC condenser. So I'm gonna come in, get all this out of the way. And another thing you notice is this fan is really heavy. This older style motor is very heavy. This thing probably weighs, I don't know, 15 pounds. Whereas the fan we're replacing it with is going to weigh somewhere closer to five pounds. Not that it's as big a deal on a car that weighs 4,000 pounds as it is on the Z, but still a little bit of weight savings never hurt. On the left, we have our new fan and the right, the older fan. You can see the new one is definitely smaller. It's a 12 inch fan versus the old one being a 14 inch fan. I didn't think it was necessary to have a 14 inch fan running at all times on this car. The 12 inch fan should be more than enough. So it's gonna be a lot lighter and it's also gonna be a lot less restrictive when the car is moving. Fans block airflow when the car is moving. They're only good for when the car is sitting still. And 90% of the time, your car is moving. It doesn't need the fan. It's only when you're sitting still. So this will be better for a majority of the time. We're gonna lose some weight. It's gonna be a cheap replacement. So let's get started. Well, BMW was nice enough to give us this little cross member here to mount everything to. So I put two M6 nut certs right here. And what I'm gonna do is use those to mount the fan on the top. And I'll make some sort of little bracket down here off the bottom to mount it. Once we've got it mounted, we'll run the wires up following basically the location of the stock wire and bring it around over to the side by the air box. So 
I've got the fan mounted pretty securely. It's not going anywhere. All I have to do now is put the shroud back on and the wiring run up under the headlight and we can start our wiring from the engine bay side. It's worth noting that for this fan, because it's going to be a pusher fan and pushing air through the radiator, you're going to hook it up backwards. So you're going to hook the power up to the black wire on the fan and the ground to the blue wire on the fan. Otherwise, it's going to be fighting the airflow and it's going to make things worse. If you watch my video on the electric fan conversion, this is going to be very similar. The wiring is almost going to be identical. We're going to have an inline fuse, which you're just going to get a loop of wire that you just cut. And right here, we've got a 30 amp fuse. I'm going to be using some of these tea splices, which I am very fond of. Basically, you're going to crimp it onto the wire here, fold this over, which kind of looks like a T, a little bit. And then you're going to take your blade connector and it slides into a slot here. So it's completely isolated. You can pop this out. The splice is not exposed in any way. It's so much better than a traditional splice. I really like these. And for our 40 amp relay, we have our ground, which is a black wire, our signal wire, which when the key's turned and it's in the on position, as long as the key's in the on position, the fan will be running. So this is our signal wire. We have the power wire out and the power wire in. So it's gonna come in from the battery, go through the relay. Once it's closed, it'll go back out this yellow wire into the fan. It's extremely simple, almost exactly like the other setup. The only difference is we do not have the thermo switch that needs to close to ground out the relay. It's just always going to be grounded, and as soon as we get that signal from the car, fan will be on. So here we have the relay for our electric fan conversion, and here is the relay for our new fan, which is going to be on all the time. We have our black wire, which is coming out of the Tupperware container to this ground wire, which is up in over here by the hinge. We have our power wire going directly to the fan. We have our signal wire, which is coming off the same green with white striped signal wire as the electric fan conversion. And then we have our power wire hooked up to our inline fuse, which is coming over here to a different red wire. This has power all the time. I put the electric fan conversion on this wire over here and our new fan on this one. Any of these big three red wires in the back of the box will work. Just don't put them on the same wire. I don't want to put too much load through one wire. As you can see, the T connectors work beautifully, keeps everything in space. I can disconnect it if I have to. I can almost reverse the whole thing without any signs of marring or any exposed wires. So all I'm going to do is cover up these blade connectors just to keep everything from interacting with each other and we'll be done. But before we do that, we'll just keep those separated and we'll go test it. So I'm going to go turn the key and you should hear the fan come on. As you can see, it works perfectly. As soon as I turn the key on, the fan starts running. Like I said earlier, this won't be for everyone, but for me, the AC button is pushed on my car 24 seven. So even if it was the factory fan, it's gonna be running 24 seven anyway. The nice thing about this is I know when it's running and when it's not because I wired it. I don't have the factory computer just making decisions for me. So in the winter, I'm gonna put a switch in line for the ground so I can turn it off. So if I know it's cold outside, and I don't want the fan running, I just pop the hood, flip a switch, and the fan won't turn on unless I get back out and flip the switch to turn it on. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.